Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Canary Room, season six. I think episode four, is it episode four? I don't know. I'll, I'll know when I put the edit together. I think it's episode four of the show. Uh, so what have we got in store for you today? Well, you can probably hear the room is bouncing. Um, the uh, the lustful song of... Um, of our Canary Cox our, uh, is, is absolutely um, echoing around the room. So we have singled off all of the Cock Canaries um, just coming up to the end of February. So we've got them now in their breeding cages. Um, the ladies are still in the flight at the moment. Of course, we haven't done that yet with the, the native finches, but more of that as we crack on with the show. Um, We'll look at the white line, we'll look at all of the birds. Last time out we saw um, all of the whites. This time we'll see a couple of the uh, the buff cock birds that are going with them. One of them I'm not certain about. Um, one of the hen, uh, one of the whites that is. I'm not certain whether it's a cock or a hen, but a little bit more of that later on. Um, thank you to everyone who's got in touch. Thank you to everyone who hits a like and to everyone who's subscribed to the show. Um, your comments, your likes, uh, uh, you know, it makes all of this worthwhile. I really appreciate it. While I'm on, huge congratulations to Ollie at OC Avery, who I'm sure by the time this episode has gone out will have surpassed 15,000 subscribers, which is a phenomenal, a phenomenal achievement, Ollie. And uh, one of his latest videos has had over 200,000 views. So if you haven't seen it, it's Ollie's new bird room. It's a cracking room. Um, it's a great video. Check it out uh, and make sure if you haven't already subscribed to OC Avery that you bounce on over there. And with Shane, and with Carl, and with the Red Factor Man, and with Canary TV. In fact, one of the things about the uh, YouTube now is just the volume of channels which have started out. Special mention to Andy as well um, with his borders. Andy's got a couple of episodes out on his borders. Um, if you haven't subscribed to that, check that out as well. For me, very much the more the merrier. You know, what we can do to keep this hobby um, in touch and keep this hobby going. Bring it on. So, uh, well done, lads. Well done to everyone who's got a channel, who puts the time and the effort in uh, to get shows out there for you. And well done to all of you for liking and subscribing and sharing. So you know what to do, everyone. Grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, and enjoy the show. Oh, that's hot. Well, I mentioned at the outset the noise. The noise in the room is um, it's, it's deafening, to be honest. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Um, last couple of weeks, and this is part two, really, of preparing birds for the, uh, the breeding season. What we've done now is we've singled all the cock birds off, the cock canary birds. We've left the native finches, um, but we have singled off all the cock canary birds. So you can see in the cages behind me, we've got a couple of our Norwich cock birds. We've got four Norwich cock birds currently, uh, and I've trimmed them. Um, so they're you know not in their exhibition clothes at the moment. Um, they've been in the flight cages. They were starting to get a little bit rowdy. Um, so I bought them in uh, and I've trimmed them. I've trimmed the tails uh, and I've trimmed around the vent area. Something I'll do with all of the heavily feathered birds. So I've actually done it as well with the with the Norwich um, cross Norwich feeders that I've got. Um, so important to do. Why? Well, the feathers get in the way of breeding. Uh, it's as simple as straightforward as that. So um, I will always at this time uh, defer to my, uh, well, to the maestro himself, to Keith. Um, it makes me uh, chuckle always when I see this video because Keith has got a pair of what can only be described as Margaret's scissors. But this is how Keith trims his Norwich. It's a video you've seen before, but it's timely to see it again. So I will hand over now to Keith. And you see the, all the feathers like that, the heavy feathers, so you need to cut round the bench without accidentally cutting their leg off. So you keep the both legs under your thumb and finger, your forefinger, you cut round the bench, leaving the feel of feathers around the bench. You can if you think the feel of feathers are 
extra long, you can trim them down as well. I we also cut a little bit off the tail. Then I check to see if the claws won't cut in. If they won't cut in, cut them just in front of the vein, like that. And also, if you're expecting your ends to rear, get a lot of feather around the eyes, cut the feathers around the eyes. Like that. So they can see. Okay, and that's how the bird should look. So you do that the same with the cocks. Okay, and also, I also trim a little bit off the end of the tail on the cocks, because some of the ends pull the cock tail. Okay, hope you do it well. So there we've seen it. We've seen Keith trim the birds. I've done a similar thing. I've got feathers all over me. Wearing a black t-shirt and trimming canaries is not a good idea. Um, so I have trimmed uh, the four Norwich cocks. Um, I've trimmed the two cross Norwich feeders. And for the first time making his canary room debut um, is a, a cock bird that you'll see in the cage behind me here. Uh, it is um, a heavily variegated blue border cock. Um, so uh, I have mentioned I've got a pair of borders in so new to the room for 2023 they've always been a um, uh, an addition that's been popular um, so new to the room for 2023 is a, a, a pair of borders as well so I've got a three parts dark border hen she's still in the flight baths have been on in the flights as well all of the hen birds and the natives are still in flight cages and they will stay there um we what end of february now will probably stay until the second first maybe second week in march so um the reason that i've done that well we are forecast another cold snap now i have a video on my channel which is how can you tell when birds are in breeding condition now you know the cocks bouncing singing lustfully is one thing um, but actually, cocks are often ahead of the hens, um, and the, hen, the cocks will often drive the hens into condition. What we want, obviously, is hens in condition. Now, because there's a cold snap due, I, uh, I'm going to keep the hens in the flight cages for um, perhaps a little bit longer. As part of our preparation, they've had another treatment of Exalt. Um, so that's our anti-mite solution we're using for this year. So it was easier um, to do them all in one cage, uh, all in the flight cages. So I did that over the weekend. Um, I've been away, working away for a few days. So Claire has been looking after the birds. She's done a sterling job as always. Um, and, and obviously that made it a little bit easier for her. So I'll be back today. I've sorted all of the cock canary cages out. Um, and separated off all of the cock birds and that's why you can hear the noise volume has gone up an extra level now the noise the the birds the moves that you know they've gone from from different heights in the shed so the lighting in the room is different we need to just be mindful of that and i'll keep an eye over the next few days to see if there are any dropped feathers or so um so just keep an eye on when you move birds from one part of the your bird room to another it can have an impact on them it seems to impact the, the lighter birds the clearer birds more than it does the darks but it can still impact the dark birds so still to come let's have a little chat about that white line we've got in development so it seems that I am not alone in my development of a, uh, a white line this year. And in fact, uh, there's a number of you out there who, um, who got in touch um, and were really, really happy to, uh, to see that. I'm chuckling to myself here because um, I'm looking at one of the birds uh, which is in with the hens. It's one of the, um, the feeder birds which at the time I'd vented um, and it's a cock. So I'm just looking at it now in with the hen. So in a second, I'm going to catch it up and uh, I'm going to separate it off. But it's absolutely bouncing. So that's going to get separated off very, very quickly. Um, <coughs> so um, the white line, back to the white line. Um, I've got um, 
now you can see the, the, the two white allied birds, which I think were cocks, are separated off. However, I say think were cocks. The bird that I got in from Keith, I've not heard sing. Um, I vented it and it looks, it's vented, so venting basically vent sexed. I vent sexed it and it looks like it's a cock bird. It's venting as a cock bird. Um, it's an unflighted bird. However, when I saw it in the flights before, it was pulling the feathers out of another bird. Now that is hen behavior. It was pulling the tail feathers out. That's hen behavior, particularly at this time of year. I'm looking in the flight behind me. I can see a couple of the gray wings. Those gray wings are pulling um, uh, bits and bobs. They're pulling uh, bits and bobs of um, millet spray as well. So they are not, it would suggest, they're not a million miles away from breeding condition. So the white line, we've got a question mark over this bird. That's okay because there's a question mark over a couple of the fifes, if I'm honest. Um, I've got a couple of clear and lightly variegated yellow birds, which I've marked down as hens. Now, they've got really rich colour on them, but that's something I've been working on. So normally you can tell. They have got, though, the telltale frosting on the back of the neck, which leads me to conclude that they are hens. Um, it's often absent in cock birds, but... Um, you know, we all make mistakes. If regular viewers to the channel will know a couple of years back, I got it horrendously wrong with a couple of buff cocks that then laid eggs. So um, no doubt I'll get it wrong again, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm happy to admit my mistakes. Um, so we've got a, um, got birds here, uh, the white line looking good. A couple of clear or ticked, slightly ticked birds as well in it which I think will do us um, the world of good. On the next episode, what I will do is I will, um, I will follow in the, the footsteps of Simon Meredith. Now, some of you will have already seen this on Facebook. Um, if you haven't, Simon had two intensive, so that's yellow feathered birds, um, hens, uh, and they were sisters, the birds. And what he'd done is he plucked just a, a feather out of the chest uh, just to show the difference on two visually very similar birds just to show the difference of the feather configuration there um, really important I will do that on the next episode so I'll show some of the feather pairings that I've looked at as well for this year so fabulous bit of advice from Simon there and um, so that's our white line let's have a look and talk about some of the other fifes. So in the cages behind me here, which is the main fife breeding block, the white fifes will be bred on this side of the room. So there's four pairs there. Um, I've got decent size single cages, but decent size single cages for them. Um, and on this side here, I've got a top row and we can see as we pan across the top row that I've got all of the, um, the sort of the six main cock birds in the stud. So there's a clear buff cock there, which is a, a 2022 bird. There's a clear yellow um, cock bird. Sorry, that's a 2021 bird. Clear yellow cock bird there, which is a 2022 bird bred here. This is a variegated yellow cock bird, which is a 2020 bird. This bird here is a uh, buff bird, um, buff variegated bird. This bird is a, uh, a 2022 bred bird. This bird is a, a, almost a self green buff cock. That's a, self, a 2022 buff um, bred bird. And then in the end, we've got the fawn cock that we got off um, Matt Dando. Um, then underneath, you can see there's two rows here of completely empty cages. So what will happen is this cock bird here, this buff cock bird, will have two yellow hens below it. This buff cock bird will have two yellow hens below it. The yellow cocks there will have two buff hens below them. And then what I've got underneath is I've got another six cock birds. Now these birds are, you know, of equal quality, really. And the balance in this stage is all about the number of hens that you've got and, and you know, how you can move those hens around and how you can spread those hens and, it's it it's been it's been a challenge there are cock birds here that could quite easily be um in trios um quite easily 
They're not. These are in single cages. Now, there's a couple of things that you'll notice on the cages. So at the top here, these cockbirds have got um, the seed, they've got one perch, and they've got uh, an empty hopper. Now, that hopper it will have some unifeed in it. I haven't fed it yet. I'll put some in at the weekend, just a little bit, um, just to keep them in peak, peak condition. You'll notice with the cages here, where there's a cockbird, is there's a wire divider and then there's an empty cage. Now, at the moment, they've just got the one perch in as well. Ultimately, there'll be another perch at the end, so the hen and the cock will have a double breeder to operate in. I've left the wire dividers in to start with so they can see that there's something next door. At the moment, all they can see is an empty cage. In a couple of weeks' time, they're going to see their mate. So that will give them the chance to, to really uh, connect with them. Um, I've only put one perch in here. Um, at this moment in time, just to keep the birds moving, just to keep the cock birds moving now, um, these are 16 inch cage fronts, so they're a decent size cage front. These birds have come from flight cages. They will only be in here for the breeding season and they'll be returned to flight cages. And they are, um, they've, got to, they've got to make that jump. So to get the water, they've got to make a jump. They've got to move up. And that's what I want them to do. I want them to move. I want them to stay fit. That's going to be key certainly for the breeding season okay so that's the fifes in this room the um british finches um well we've also done plans for them for this year so let's take a look at those now once again i am uh, indebted to, to my good lady claire who um you know regular viewers will know that the, the guy who presents the canary room tends to yo-yo in his weight uh, and having been working on a particularly desk based project for six months i haven't moved as much as i have been doing uh, and so let's just say i'm a little bit more full of figure figured than i have been over the last few years um health wise i'm okay so thank you for everyone who's who's been in touch and said are you okay matt yes i am okay thank thankfully um so the outside flights well a couple of things with the outside flights the first one is the flight between the uh, canary room and the garage um, and that has housed over the entire uh, winter period a pair of native british goldfinches um, you can see them here took out all of the old christmas tree cleaned out all of the garbage in there all of the, the poo um, and basically got ourselves a really really nice pair of um goldies got some fake material i've put the um i've put the the nest pans already in they, they won't go to nest although they do look quite advanced actually the goldies they're not gonna go to nest anytime soon but they are there and ready to go whenever so that's the goldies what you haven't seen is the work that i've been doing in the garage uh, and so happy to share that with you now um so uh, first thing is um a shout to Matt again at Peckway. Um, so Matt has uh, Matt has um, provided. I purchased uh, off Matt uh, one of these double breeding cages, uh, ninety centimeters long, forty centimeters high, forty centimeters deep. It's a green cage. You can see here. Um, my intention is to purchase a, a further three and a stand for them, and they will be. Um, sort of spare cages now there will be spare cages in the canary room for this year's young i've got at least uh well there's a flight at the bottom there of four cages there's another six there there's another six there so that's 16 there's at least 20 cages potentially 24 cages in the room um of size which will take young but I've got an overspill as well. So Matt's very kindly um, supplied these. Um, I have paid for them, so, um, but they're a great cage, uh, Italian made cage, really good, big, nice. Um, and so they'll do me the world of good. What you'll also see in the garage is a six foot double flight cage. Now, you know, super tempted, super tempted 
to put a pair of natives in there or a couple of pair of natives in there and try and breed. But I am, at this moment in time, resisting the temptation. Whether that, <laughs> whether that resolve continues remains to be seen. But for now, there is resolve. Um, so that's what I've done in, in there. One of the things that um, we've also done um, is I've put some of the natural branches in for the bullfinches. So you can see I got caught the bullies up, put them in a cage um, while I was sort of redressing the flights. And I also put the nest pans in. Now, what I would say to you, and I know, you know, I've had bullfinches now for three years or so. I bred them successfully. Um, and I'm indebted to Andy Barr for his, his advice because Andy's done really well with his bullies and um, supplied me with a lot of my, my stock over the years. Um, so um, one of the things with the bullies is that um, I will separate them. Um, so they have been together, but they are actually separate now. So the cock and the hen are separate. Um, and I just won't put them back together probably for another four weeks or so. So um, I don't certainly don't want them, you know, going to nest and having empty eggs and anything like that. But actually the environment that they're in, and this is when they were together a week or so ago, the environment they're in, I think is really nice. I love the natural branches in there and I, I hope you do too. So that's the natives outside and what we've done. Inside, well, we've still got the um, lesser red poles here uh, and a siskin and a siskin in here and some lesser red pole cocks. Um, I have um, got a couple of lessers still to come in and the twites are still to come in as well. So they're still to come into the room, but that's something to look forward to. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. Well, listen, that's all we've got time for today. Um, next time out, we'll look at uh, the hens. So uh, some of the hens will be there. I will be at Stafford. If you see me, come and say hello. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, Give us a subscribe. If you've enjoyed this, hit the like button and also hit the notification bell as well so you get notified every time that a new episode comes out. If I see you at Stafford, I look forward to it. But if not, until next time, everyone, take care.